Hello YouTube, this is Ebony and this is PCOS Discussion. Today I'm going to be speaking about metformin, which is a drug that is used to treat PCOS. Um, PCOS I spoke about in um, another video and if you're not familiar with it, you can go back to that video before you view this one and then you'll, you know, so that you're brought up to date. Um, however, um, metformin also known as glucophage, is a drug that is generally given to people with type 2 diabetes. But because people with polycystic ovary syndrome um, have insulin resistance, this is usually the drug of choice for people with polycystic ovary syndrome. Okay, this is normally prescribed to you by either your OBGYN, by your nurse practitioner, or by your reproductive endocrinologist. Okay. Um, what you may want to do before you prescribe metformin is to make sure you have found out the different levels of your hormones, um, usually by going to a reproductive endocrinologist. Um, that's why I stress that you may want to go to one. Even if you go to OBGYN, you may want to go to a reproductive endocrinologist in conjunction with the OBGYN. That way they can communicate you know, how your hormone levels are before and after treatment. Okay, um, and generally they will bring you, you know, in several times during your cycle. I'll speak more about a reproductive endocrinologist at another time, though, so that you know what to expect. Um, as for the metformin, um, it is given in several different dosages, and again, like I said, in regular or extended release form. Um, most people tend to start out with either 250 milligrams or 500 milligrams, and then the physician will work their way up to the dosage that is working, you know, for you. So, um, and they do that mainly because, like I said, the side effects, and people tend to have less of the side effects or experience less of the side effects by starting out with a lower dosage and then working themselves up. Um, if your doctor doesn't do that, you may want to discuss with your doctor if you can do it that way. If you are experiencing um, severe symptoms and you don't feel like you want to go on. Um, like, I say, like I said, PCOS is like the, the drug of choice and that's because it tends to work for people with polycystic ovary syndrome. If you are a person with polycystic ovary syndrome and you don't agree, no, it doesn't work for me. Like I said, everyone's body is different, so it might not be working for you. Or it might be that the dosage is not a good dosage for you. You might not like the symptoms, but with every drug, you want to give the drug a chance for your body to get adjusted to it. Um, it took my body about three to three to four weeks for it to fully adjust to my body. And even that being said, I notice that when I don't take it consistently, as in take it every day, or take it during the specified time frame that I'm supposed to take it, that's when I experience problems with the side effects. Or if I don't eat something, because metformin you're supposed to take with a meal. Now, someone asked me about what do I mean by with a meal before, and for me, um, when I say with a meal, I eat my food first, finish my food, and then take the pills. Because anytime the drug is telling me that you have to take it with a meal, that is a red flag to me that there is going to be stomach upset. So I make sure I eat food first, then I take the pill, immediately after eating the food. And... Um, Let's see. You like with the headaches, I would take Tylenol. Take keep the ty keep Tylenol with you. But if you're allergic to not Tylenol, find something else that that works for you. Um, I don't tend to have headaches, but you know, like I said, everyone's different. I do have them if I do not eat. Now, if I have the medication in the day, I take the extended release. So I take and I take it twice a day. Um, if I don't take um, if I do take my medication in the day with my breakfast, um, in the afternoon, if I do not eat something, I find that I will have a headache, a severe headache, like a migraine. And, you know, I'm guessing, 
I'm not 100% sure because I'm not using a glucometer to check my sugar levels. But I'm thinking because this is a, um, a insulin stabilizing drug, if you are not taking in food and you have this drug working on you as if you have diabetes to stabilize your insulin levels, um, it might be bringing your sugar levels down. So, and that's because you're not eating something for the during the day. So you may want to make sure you eat food. So that may stop your headaches, may ease your headaches. Um, so carry around an orange, a banana, anything up, something to put in your stomach to make sure that you have some type of food in your system. It's never good to take medication on an empty stomach unless the medication specifies to do so. Um, as for the diarrhea, I would say carry Imodium with you. I find that to be the best thing. Um, a lot of women I speak to, a lot of the women on um, the website that I go to, Imodium, that is like our drug of choice. We recommend it. It's number one recommended. Imodium seems to do the job. Um, as for um, feeling nauseated, again, I would say that tends to happen when you don't eat enough food or you haven't given it the food time enough to get to your stomach, to help coat your stomach before you take the metformin. I noticed that if I eat too quickly or if I didn't eat enough food and I do take my metformin, I will get stomach upset, but that's the only time that I've noticed that I experienced that. So you may want to try to adjust it around how you eat. You may want to make sure you do eat. And like again, um, you want to make sure what you eat also because it's an insulin drug. It's, um, it, it's working on the sugar levels in your body, the glucose levels. So you, if you're eating a lot of carbs, if you're eating a lot of sweets... You may want to be careful because that may initiate the diarrhea that you're experiencing, the side effect with the metformin. So, you know, some people complain, ah, but if you're eating like cake, cookies, ice cream, and, you know, you have diarrhea, I mean, think about how you're eating when you're taking a metformin. You, you have to be, you know, a little bit realistic when it comes to... The um, type of drug you're taking and what is it actually working on in your body and that will give you a, a clue to how to eat with that medication um, also um, people like to know can you take metformin while you're pregnant um, some women say yes some women say no like I say speak to your doctor for me I would say to take it because in um, metformin it helps to regulate your hormone levels um, and if you have polycystic ovary syndrome your hormone levels are off and if it helps you to get pregnant I would say it will help you to maintain your pregnancy so a lot of women that I speak to um, they tend to take it they, they tend to continue to take it some of them at least take it up to their 12th week of pregnancy so that they can make sure that you know it, it stays you know up to that time because women with polycystic ovary syndrome tend to have miscarriages it's it's something that does happen whether or not the miscarriage would have happened regardless it's just that the high number of women that do have miscarriages with polycystic ovary syndrome I would have to say that it's linked to hormone levels Okay, now I don't really find doctors checking hormone levels too much while you're pregnant. I, I mean, they I think if you have polycystic ovary syndrome that they should, but I don't find it too often. Um, I would say, me personally, I, like one time pregnant, I'm going to make sure I take my metformin. And I'm going to take it throughout the pregnancy. Some women like to take it because women with polycystic ovary syndrome also tend to get gestational diabetes. And they find that if they take the metformin, the women who do, can take, uh, who, who do continue to take the metformin, they don't develop it. Now, I can't say 100% of them do not develop it. But for the most part, most of them said that they didn't develop it. And they think they want to, you know, owe it to the metformin. 
And I, I would have to agree with them. I think that is one of the main reasons why they didn't. And I can't see um, anything being wrong with that. Um, so, you know, but like again, speak to your doctor. I'm not going to tell you what to do for your own, for your own safety. Speak to your doctor. See if your doctor feels it's safe. Discuss it. See if you yourself want to do it. I mean, but to me, I, I think it's well worth it. Um, because there, there's sometimes unexplained miscarriage. They don't know what happened. And I would have to say it, it has to do with hormone levels. Okay. Um, like I said, metformin, you need, to, you, you need to take it consistently every day at the time you're supposed to take it. At the same time you've taken it, you know, be consistent and give it a chance to work with your body. And it, it tends to be an okay drug. If you just monitor yourself, it might help you to lose weight. It will then help you get regular menstrual cycles. Um, it will help you to ovulate. It will get rid of the little fuzzy hairs you may have on your, your lip, your chin, anywhere you have. Um, I won't say get rid of it, but it will help to minimize them or make them appear smaller, skinnier, not as thick. Um, I found that to um, happen for me because I get the little, the little hairs that, you know, I take it away. But I've noticed that when I consistently take the metformin, it doesn't grow back as fast and doesn't grow back as thick. So I think that's a plus for me. And it's well worth it. It's well worth getting my menstrual cycles. And like I said, I have achieved pregnancy with it before. And... Um, and that was only after one month of taking it consistently. It worked wonders for me. And that, you know, that I think is a plus. So I know that the next time I achieve pregnancy, I will make sure to take the metformin throughout the pregnancy. Okay. Um, but like I said, it's up to you. But um, just like I said, people have problems with metformin, I would say give it a chance. If you've, get, you've given it a chance and you've only lasted like about a week and you was like, oh, forget this drug. I can't take this, this, this diarrhea, this headaches. This is, this is worse than the PCOS. That's what you're saying. You know what? Just give it a chance. I'm telling you, just give it a chance. Um, give it one month of consistently taking it carry around your tylenol extra strength carry around your emodium watch what you eat um if you do those things make sure you drink a lot of water i'm telling you i think i think you would li like it i mean at some point um watch your cycle see what's going on and Ask your doctor to check your levels and know what your levels are. Because a lot of people, you know, you get all these blood tests. You don't know what your levels are. Find out what your levels are before. And then while you're taking the drug, find out what your levels are. Then Because then you know if it's working. Because not all the time will you get a menstrual cycle like immediately. Because sometimes people think, okay, this is going to happen overnight. No, it may have happened immediately for me. And it may have happened immediately immediately for me that time but this time may not but you know um everyone is different their bodies are different but the only true way to know if it's working for you is your blood test make sure you know your levels ladies okay and that's all the advice that i can really give about metformin i think i covered like most of what i could if you have any other questions, um, you'd like to know anything else about metformin, you can send me a message or you can make a comment below. Just let me know what you, you know, you would like to know more of about it. Okay, so have a good week and next week we'll talk about something else. All right, bye-bye.